Hey guys, let's talk about a California bill that appears to be on the cusp of becoming a statute that would affect the Manson cases. And hat tip out to Invincible Flying Fox for sending me the link to it, asking me to look at it, because it is certainly relevant, in my opinion, to these cases. If you remember, we talked about the statute of limitations in the earlier video and how the legislature had passed a statute to give a 10-year statute of limitations and for all actions commenced on or after January 1st, 2019. And then the court construed that to mean, however, if you would have been barred under the old statute of limitations, this doesn't revive those claims. So all the suits against Manson at that point were now subject to the old statute of limitations and not the benefit of the new one. That had been existing law, so you would think that they would have known to put the revival language in the statute if they wanted it, but they didn't do it. And the court called them out for that and said, this is how it gets interpreted. You must not have meant to revive these old claims, so you're going to have to proceed under the old statute of limitations. And the cases have done that. So to get around the old, uh, shorter statute of limitations, they all alleged and are alleging things that would invoke a discovery rule or some other exception to the statute of limitations to get past the, the more limited period. So recovered memory or not knowing the extent of the abuse, um, that could be a tolling situation based on the discovery rule. In Bianco's case, she was the benefit of the court saying there was a fact issue on equitable estoppel because of her fear of Manson, that that would toll the statute of limitations. So they have in some cases succeeded in keeping the cases going, but in Ashley Walter's case, hers was thrown out on the statute of limitations for not pleading enough facts to, to get the discovery rule in play. But even for the cases still in progress, it's a problem. Because for example, in the Bianco case, all the court said is, is there's a fact issue. So that means later on, Bianco would have to convince a fact finder in the case, judge or jury or whoever, that her fear was reasonable for the length of time necessary to involve not filing her lawsuit uh, in time to to meet the earlier statute of limitations. So she would have to prove that, right? And these other people would have to prove these tolling facts. Who wants to have to do that? The less things you have to prove, the better. And of course, Ashley Walters is out there with no case at all right now because uh, her, her complaint was dismissed on the basis that she didn't even allege enough facts. So Representative Buffy Hicks has or did introduce in February of this year a bill to revive these old claims to actually put the revival language into the, the statute and it moved through pretty quickly. So it was passed in August 25th of this year by the Senate and the Assembly and it's enrolled as of August 29th, 2022. So in California, that basically means the formal version of this bill is going to go to the governor's office and he can sign it and it'll become a law. He can not sign it and eventually through their process, it becomes a law or he can veto it. That seems unlikely. Unless the statute says otherwise, it would become effective on January 1st of this coming year. So that's good news for these plaintiffs because I think it would operate to mean that they no longer are subject to this old statute of limitations and therefore they, they wouldn't have to prove um, the elements of the tolling that they had to claim originally to get around it since it appears now to be applying retroactively. Can that help Ashley Walters? Does it factor into perhaps why she appealed? And I think maybe it does. Let's look at uh, what it actually says. So it expands these cases. It does make the new statute of limitations retroactive as long as the actions complained about, the assault, occurred after January 1st, 2019. And the, the claim cannot have been settled by written settlement agreement or litigated to finality in a court of competent jurisdiction before January 1st, 2023. So Ashley Walter's case was in fact dismissed, of course, and the complaint dismissed with prejudice, which means the trial judge said you can't bring it anymore. Now she's appealed that. So is that finality or not finality? And I think what she's going to look at and her lawyer's going to look at is uh, California Civil Procedure Code 1049, which says an action is deemed to be pending from the time of its commencement until its final determination upon appeal. And that has been read, at least in one case I looked at, I and mean, maybe more, that a case isn't final, it's not finalized, there's no finality until the appeal is handled. So if that's a correct construction, then her appeal should be successful because the, the legislature has said, here's a revival statute and we want it to apply retroactively. So there can be constitutional issues with that. There also could be other things that I haven't looked at because I haven't um, gone into this too deeply because I just looked at it this morning. 
But the question to me was, could this affect the Manson suits? And it absolutely could affect those. In fact, I think it probably is because of those, because this 10 year statute of limitations gets passed, right? And then it goes to court and then the courts say, hey, you didn't put revival language in here. So we're going to keep throwing these cases out under the old statute of limitations unless there's an exception that applies. So then Rep or Assemblywoman Hicks comes and says, well, look at this new bill I've got that would add this revival language. And the bill has other things in it, too, that give different lengths of time for pe people involved in other circumstances. But this is the one that I think would affect the Manson cases. So it is, to me, kind of a bombshell situation of this appears to be aimed, if not directly at Manson due to the publicity of his cases, at least this type of case in that it now uh, changes what the court had previously said that, hey, the new statute of limitations doesn't apply if your case had already been barred by the statute of limitations because the legislature didn't include revival language. And now they are putting this revival language in place. So I'll watch and see if somebody brings up any legal analysis that causes me to change how this looks to me. But that's what it appears to be. So hypothetically, this thing may become law in short order, and then it would affect these cases as far as I see it. Thanks.